Welcome everyone to the Never Ending Random Discussion! I'm Andrew! I'm Amanda! James! John! We're gonna talk about things! <laughs> We have a lot to talk about this week, quite a few things happen in the tech world, and I think that's where we'll start. Stylus lovers, take note. So, Samsung, and Motorola, and Asus, and Sony, and everyone else announced a fucking ton of products this week. And a as this, fuck ton. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and as it's been two weeks now since our last episode... Uh, we've got a lot of shit to talk about. The first one, I think probably the one that's going to get the most sales, is the Note 4. Which, you know, looks pretty fucking sweet. Yeah, it's surprisingly improved. Um, it, they got rid of the stitching! Yeah, it has me, it has me considering the upgrade. And that's saying something. Because mm -hmm. they don't usually have good otter boxes for the notes. <laughs> That's like your biggest thing. It's got a 1440p screen at 515 ppi. Yeah. Huge pixel density. That's yeah. a lot of peeping. Yeah, it Aye. really is. Aye. Every inch. Uh, <laughs> the rest is pretty much what you would expect. It's uh, <laughs> Snapdragon 805, 3 gigs RAM. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, it's got OIS in the camera, which is a huge deal. Um, I'm really upset about another phone that wasn't announced today not having that. It's weird that it didn't, but yeah. that's never been really their big focus yeah. on it. We're not talking it, about it. It's not a potato, so that's all I want. <laughs> um, but it, it's not it's not water resistant. Hmm. That's that's different. surprising. Yeah, considering how I mean relatively easy they did it with the S5 and how much they talked about how much they did it. Yeah. And, you know, I think people, were, I thought people were really into that. But I was. Apparently Still not. Still am. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, kind of surprised by it. You know, other than that, it's a good device. It's a good step up from the Note 4. Though I'm not sure it's a huge step up from the Note 3. Right. It, you know, it's kind of it's, iterative. That's, yeah. uh, that's exactly it. A Samsung's mm -hmm. always been like that with their, with their new iterations. It's just a marginal increase. Like I tell people when they're doing upgrades, if you've already got a Note 3, wait for the 5. Mm -hmm. it, you know, if you're yeah. still rocking a Note 2 like our editor is, he's going to jump straight on yeah. this 4. That's a, that's a huge jump. Yeah. Um, although I'm surprised he wasn't going for something edgier. <laughs> <laughs> Edgy new design from Samsung! Okay, I, I don't know why. I, I, I cannot even... Uh, yeah. Why? Samsung has created the Samsung Galaxy Note Edge. And it has, the closest thing I can say is bevel on the mm -hmm. right side of the screen that acts as its own little ribbon screen, which basically looks like they took the S Pen out of the side and con like co collapsed that side. And now it's this revolutionary new idea to give you ex a different piece of real estate somehow. Yeah, it's one of those, uh, I can't quite get it. And also, it, they didn't take anything out. They added it on, so it's like a note, but wider. Yeah. yeah. They actually tacked it on to the side. So it's, for one thing, that's a fucking lot of pixels. Yeah, that's a lot. That would be what? Yeah, it's some, uh, 1600p or something? It's 55. Yeah, something I think is kind of funny is Apple bitched at them for for the pen on rounded, on rounded corners. And now they're doing rounded screen. Yeah, so now they're gonna round the corn. So now they, so now they're doing rounded that. edges. Yeah, rounded edges. Take that, Apple. Yeah, fruits. <laughs> and also, you know, there's, there is an API for it. People can. Oh yeah. People can make ask for it, but no one will. No one's gonna buy it. If you do buy it, you're going to end up, not getting software updates nearly as quick as the note would. Yeah. Yeah, that one's gonna trail behind. And. You know, there's going to be maybe a couple hundred apps for it, all told, and most of them are going to be rulers. You know, <laughs> rulers. Are, like it, 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 it would be kind of nice to color code like all of your alerts to where, like, I'm not supposed to have my phone on me at, at work, but I just turn it to the corner and mm -hmm. see. Okay, there's there's a red alert. That means that that I'd say I've got a text message from 
one of these select people. I used to actually do cool. that on my Nexus because it's got the multicolored uh, LED. Oh yeah. I used yeah. to actually do something similar to that with light flow. But this is, I really, the only reason I can see that Samsung would do this is because they've got a technology for making a bendable display mm -hmm. and they want to show people. Oh. It's the same reason that LG did the G Flex, you know, the, the banana phone. <laughs> and the same reason that Samsung did the Galaxy Round, the taco phone. <laughs> um, it's so that they can show off this cool technology. Oh, yeah. And I see, and I get it's, it's neat that the screen can bend. I want something that always bends. Bends as much as you want it mm -hmm. to. Bends on demand, you know, like our smartwatches, but the whole strap, the whole thing like that. I just want something without want glass, on. like some kind of polymer that feels yeah. and looks like glass, but when you drop it, it bends rather than breaking. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> um, speaking of which, uh, have you seen the uh, not glass that came out of Samsung? Hashtag not glass. Hashtag not glass. Uh, yeah, the Samsung Gerver. Galaxy VR. Gear VR. Gear VR. Whatever. It's, it's the Gerver. Gerver. So, from what I've seen of it, it only works with the Note 4. Only with the Note 4. Not with the, the bendy one, just with the just Note 4. Just the regular Note 4. And at first I thought it was kind of Google Cardboard. Yeah. Like plastic. Yeah. And $200. Except it's not. It's, it does have... Stuff. Yeah. But it's like, it doesn't have a battery. You know? It runs off the power from the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, which to me, being someone that plays Ingress, I feel like you might be overworking the phone there a bit. Uh, they do say the phone has been shown to get really hot in there. Oh, I can uh, imagine. But oh. it's also doing some really cool like driver work where there is a display buffer in Android between what happens and when it gets to the screen that is two frames, which is very little. But in VR, any latency at all is evil. Mm, yeah. And John Carmack, who works at Oculus, and this is, to be clear, a Oculus-Samsung collaboration. Yes. Yeah. Um, John Carmack did this like ugly hack to get around that and showed it to Samsung. They saw how big of a deal it was and gave him you know, direct access to skip the frame buffer. So it is going to be much better than what you would get out of cardboard or anything else that doesn't have direct like driver level access to the screen. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it's pretty cool. It's it's a poor man's Oculus, which has its own appeal. But the fact that it only works with a note, you know, yeah, that's, it, kind, that's yeah. kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of a deal breaker for a lot of people. Like, I'm not going to move away from the S5. I said I considered it, but I'm not actually going to go get the Note 4 yeah. myself. But like, Although I do think this is going to be the kind of thing that's going to be way cooler in the future. Yeah. I don't see someone wanting to have... You, you can't get a really good VR experience from the Oculus right now because, you, well, you, the best it's the best you can get in the world. But one of the big problems is you're tethered to a PC. Mm-hmm. This is all running on the phone. You walk around and do it and do it anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Then again, Sony's device is supposed to be wireless, too. But you're still yeah. wirelessly tethered to the PS4. Yeah. You can't just go to the park in VR, which would be weird. Unless it would be really <laughs> weird. Unless, unless, they, really cool. unless they make it sync to your, to your Vita. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Go to but of course, then you've got the problem if you have to buy a Vita. <laughs> I like them. I do. I do too. I, I, oh, they're, they're pushing neat. as much as they can. I don't yeah. buy one, but they're neat. Yeah. Speaking of going to the parks and searching for things, you know, X really marks the spot. <laughs> Not only is he putting in these epically titled articles, he is now trying to find every dumb pun he can to get them out. I, I really am. Uh, uh, okay, so this is the one that I'm really excited about. Mono X! Plus one, except it's not the Moto X plus one, it's the new Moto X. Yes. Which is just as awkward to talk about as the Nexus 7 was when it became the new Nexus 7. Yeah. It's, you gotta, you gotta Although come it, up with a different name. It's still better than going from Galaxy Note 10.1 to Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition, which is almost a full breath. He forgets the Samsung part. Yes. Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition. Yeah. Long name. Amazing results. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think I've heard that before. <laughs> Pen and penning. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I'm buying this phone. I, I, of I'm course sure you are. are. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, you know, I, that didn't even need to be said. I was holding out. I'm, you know, I might. He was holding I out. I was thinking I might buy Shamu. Yes. 
Yeah. That just seems like way too much to carry around with it's, you, though. Yeah. Oh, by the way, <laughs> this has nothing to do with this so much, but the sham- the uh, Nexus 6, or whatever they're going to call it, is codenamed Shamu. Yes. <laughs> the Moto 360 Free is codenamed Minnow. <laughs> is it really? Yes. Aww. That's right, because the Moto 360 was still technically well Google on them. Uh-huh. Yeah. It still is, actually. Yeah, the, the deal still, hasn't, still hasn't gone through. Huh. Um, Interd Sting. <laughs> which, okay, so they're, st- they're still doing the Moto Maker. Although it sounds like the Moto Maker might, again, have an AT&T exclusive. At first, yeah. At first, which would suck. I haven't even heard anything about an unlocked carrier one. They they have said that the unlocked carrier one is going to be the developer edition, but they're not even pushing it as the developer edition. It'll Mm -hmm. be unlocked, it'll be a bootloader unlockable, and they're just calling it the carrier free edition. I'm Mm -hmm. sure it's going to be the same as last time where it's the AT&T one, but I'm hoping they fit all of the T-Mobile bands in there as well. I hope so too. Because Um, last time it was missing a couple T-Mobile LTE bands. Now, if I if I jump on the boat here and get one for my work phone, I would want it to have all, everything because if it's like say it's epically more awesome than the mm-hmm. S five, I might just put the S five in yeah. the drawer. Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> it really does look like it's going to be an epic device. It's got a Snapdragon eight oh one, which is uh, you know a couple steps down from the fastest. You know, like the the new Note has an eight oh five. But the big thing about the 805 is that it can push a 1440p screen, which this doesn't have. And the 801 is still going to be an epically fast chip that's going to last. It is. For I'm your... pretty sure my S5 is an 801. Yeah. And I think it is. Yeah, it might be an 803. Okay, Google. But they're not that different. Okay, Google. Ah! <laughs> Stereo! My screen's gone. <laughs> um, but it's... It's got customizable hot phrase, which is huge for me. I'm going to have hey, a Moto 360. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is a Just reference to a John Scalzi book, which all the time. is why I'm going to probably use Hey Asshole. Or you could do the Breaking Bad reference go, Yo, bitch! Yeah. Um, I wouldn't whoop. recommend that one. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you will never date again. <laughs> but uh, it's got that. It's got, you know, the standards, two gigs of RAM, kind of wish it was three. I don't think anything actually needs three right now, but I kind of wish it was three. Uh, 5.2 inch screen, kind of wish it wasn't. I really love the size of the Moto X. That was one of the best things about that phone was how nice and compact it was. Yeah. But, you know, I'm using a Nexus 5, I'm used to that size. It's about, it's actually a little smaller than the Nexus 5 still, I believe. Uh, it's got no. a better... S5 is 5.1, I think. Well, I mean, the physical footprint, because, like, if you notice, the, oh, the yeah, Nexus 5 has just, like, a... Jay Leno Chin. Jay Leno Chin, yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, it has a 13-megapixel camera, which is much better than what is in the current Moto X, which is not a high bar! Well, I mean, the Moto X is... The original Moto X is a potato. It's a fucking potato. Yeah, it really is. Um... But you the know one what they thing say that, about potatoes? They have lots of eyes. Mm. Oh. Which this phone actually does. It's got four IR sensors on the front. Kind of like, you know, how Samsung's Fire Phone has the four front-facing cameras. This has an IR sensor. Samsung's Fire Phone? Did I really say Samsung? Yes, Amazon's Fire Phone. You know, it's got the four cameras on the corner. This has IR sensors in, this, in the same places. So or what? If you get an incoming call and you don't want to answer it, you just wave your hand over it. Mm. Depart. You know the get out of here. The active phone display, calls. the active display on the original Moto X, mm-hmm. or like it could tell you took it out of your pocket, and so it would. Light oh up. yeah. Or you pick it up off the table, it would light up. Who's now, awesome. if your hand approaches it, it lights up. Ooh. Yeah. So you just like reach for it, and it lights up. You have these messages. Why? Thank you. Yeah. It's <laughs> that's a really cool feature. It's just got a bunch of these little custom Motorola features, like they did with the original Moto X that I think are going to make it a more compelling purchase than the seemingly inevitable Motorola Nexus. Seemingly. Oh, also, leather backs now. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> apparently it's not just like a thin veneer. From what I was hearing on the Android Central podcast, you can actually like push on it, hmm. and it moves. Like They've made the entire back out of really good, high-quality leather that's going to get scuffed up and worn in. 
And make it look even better. Yeah, exactly. I might very well get a leather one. Yeah. Uh, uh, something that actually kind of tickled me a little bit was trolling through uh, Google and seeing the OnePlus has now put out a, we'll give away a free one and 100 new invites because of the new Moto X launch, and they put them next to, side yeah. by side and everything. Seeing seeing people like, ah, oh, this is great, because they're trying to say that the OnePlus is better, and I'm like, no. No, it's really not. I, I saw that same picture, and I'm like, I don't see the comparison you guys are making. Yeah. It's like, Moto X last year, its its hardware was laughable com compared to Absolutely. the high-end devices, yeah. except it was still the best fucking Android phone. Yeah. It's still in the top five. Yeah. And now they're making another one on the same, like, the same vein, the same dream, the same outlook, and with much higher, much build, quality. higher build quality. Yeah. Aluminum frame now. Yeah. None of that shitty, like, half pla plastic on plastic scene that you had on the other one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally 100% buying it. Although, I do... Okay. So, you know the dimple on the back of the phone? Sure. I don't like the new one. It's they too say big. It's, it's a button, isn't it? No. No. It looks like it, it should be. The, the rumor was that it was going to be. Um, I, I, I can't come up with a good punny segue for this one. <laughs> <laughs> no funny segues. No. Ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. Mm. The Moto G. Also on the same vein as Motorola, at least. Yes. The Moto G is a, uh, fun fact, the best-selling phone Motorola has ever produced. That's because it was cheap. Mm-hmm. This new one is just as cheap, and it, you know, better specs. If I, let's see, where's the specs table? Damn it. This one doesn't have a specs table. Fuck it. I think it has better specs than the original Moto X did, and it's like $179. Off contract, just cash. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And it looks just as good as the Moto X. It's got the same, looks like, dual front-facing speakers, except on the Moto G it actually is dual front-facing speakers. <laughs> nice. Um, on the, the Moto X, it's only one speaker. One, the other one's your earpiece. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's got the dual front-facing things. It's got the uh, 720p resolution, 8-megapixel uh, camera, and uh, a better look, I think, personally. I prefer the look of the Moto G over the Moto X. It looks more like the original Moto X. Uh, it doesn't have that stupid button-looking thing. It's just got a dimple. Mm -hmm. uh, it... It's totally the phone to buy your mom. Mm. Hey, my mom gets all the high-end, like, flagships. L yeah, mine gets, like, two-year-old flagships. <laughs> but this would be a much better one because, you know, it used to be if you were getting someone a mid-range, low-end phone, you would just get them last year's model. Something like this is a much better idea because it's going to be receiving updates still. Mm -hmm. Last year's model, it's done. Yeah. It might have better specs than this, but this is going to continue to get updates. Also, this has an SD card. Nice. Mm -hmm. And I know some people still fetishize that. I don't fetishize it. I just like the option. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know people, though, that totally fetishize it. That are like, I cannot buy a device that does not have this. Have you tried using one without it? No, cannot. <laughs> and I've only met one person for whom that is a valid reason. Imagine that. We... We'll be right back. That's a sick beat, isn't it? Want to hear more? Of course you do. So head over to HeadyWorks.net and check out Galaxy Labs. He created the track Tickling Your Eardrums right now called Stamina, as well as our title track, Destroyer. You can find info about all his live performances and upcoming releases there, as well as other artists signed to Heady Works. You can also find him on SoundCloud and Facebook. That's Galaxy Laps at HeadyWorks.net. Let the wubs destroy your brain. <laughs> And we return again, and yet we're still talking about tech. I told you it was a heavy tech week. It really is. And this is really a story worth watching. It really is a story worth watching if you haven't already watched it. <laughs> so, yeah, I posted something recently on the, the Facebook page about it. 
and well, actually on the website. Matter of fact, it was not, I was started doing just the Facebook, and I just wrote a damn article on it. The Moto 360 has unveiled itself onto the world, and I got it 45 minutes before it released. <laughs> it's a fucking sexy piece of kit. It really is. Piece of kit. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's a sexy right. piece of kit. <laughs> I, I don't mean the person we know. Well, no, it's just still a weird thing to say. It, it, it was odd, yes. Uh, okay, okay let, let, let's just start with the reasons this is better than all the other smartwatches. Uh, okay. Samsung. It's... <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not Samsung. That's a point in its favor. I'll give you that. Uh, well, for one, it's round. <laughs> no bezel. No bezels. Or it's got a tiny yeah, little chin got, bezel. Yeah, it's got a it's got a teensy chin. That's um, true. It it has wireless charging. Wireless no, charging. None of that break in your dock shit. None of the break in the dock shit. Um, although it does look really super awkward on the charger. I know you set it sideways and it's just like these little wings. <laughs> but I've also seen someone that did that. You can close the watch band, oh. and it looks much less dumb. Yeah, but then you gotta go closing it every time. Mostly people aren't gonna be looking at it unless it's on you, I would imagine. It's on. Well, it turns into a really nice desk clock when you've got it on the charger. It's true, good. you know. Um, uh, yeah, it's. You're gonna be finding it's it's not the Snapdragon 400, it's the Texas Instruments. Yeah, the OMAP 3. Which we don't know if it's that's a good or a bad thing. Well, Texas Instruments has been making good calculators for a long <laughs> yeah. time, so. I feel like they've stood the test of time, and it should be okay. And making parents angry for ten for, years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and gr- grabbing a huge profit margin off of their calculators right, yes. that have not changed in ten years. Yeah. Well, um, no, they, well, no they, have, they, have, they, have, they have color screens now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and rechargeable batteries. Um, well, actually, that would have been that is Although thing. I don't know that I ever even went through batteries in mine. I used it a lot. One thing about the three, the, about the OMAP three, the chip that's in it, it was it's one of those that's made on a forty-five nanometer process, mm. and that's the size of each transistor. Modern chips are made with like twenty to thirty, like yeah, twenty-eight or twenty are the most popular in phones right now. The smaller it is, the less energy it takes for some for you know for something to get from one side of the transistor to the other. So the smaller your nodes, the more power efficient they are. That's a big part of why Haswell chips on a desktop are more power efficient than the old Ivy Bridge chips. Sure. The fact that this is on the old process might be one of the reasons that some people have been disappointed by its battery life. Um, I'm getting, I'm again seeing conflicting reports. The Verge said it'll barely make it through a day. Uh, Android Central has said it's been a day and it's at fifty percent. You know, I, I honestly, when I put it down, for one, Verge is an I company. It's, they are very I big. I wouldn't go that far. They are, they are big proponents of everything Apple does. I'm, I'm not yeah. as much of a fan of the Verge as I used to be. I think since they don't have the same editor, they're not quite as good as they used to be. They seem to be pushing more towards the buzzfeed sensationalism. But they're still a solid source. I think the main reason is you get a new device and you're playing with it a lot more than you would be, especially no. with a wearable. And especially with a well-known journalist of types who get email after email and messages after messages. And, mm-hmm. I mean, they, they are going to yeah. get more notifications alone than the average person. Yeah. Well, yeah. not even just that. When you've got something new and you're trying to push out a review on it, you're going to be using it a lot. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. didn't you say that he said it lasted 12 hours? Which is, again... Pretty much a day for most people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I'm not going to come home and spend, you know, six, the six hours I have free time. You're not going to set up your computer using your watch. My watch. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind an end of my work day or end of my whatever I'm doing that day and dropping it on the charger. Yep. You know. It's a. Uh... Did you get the uh, leather strap or the metal strap? You I think no. The metal straps. The metal, metal straps, straps are, are not available. out. Yet. Yeah. Okay. I, that's another thing I've seen conflicting reports on as to whether that was available or not. And by the time I was able to look at it, they were all sold out everywhere anyway. Of course. They sold out quick. Real yeah. quick. Like um, Nexus quick. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, they released them in the, in the, in the I don't remember the name of the company that makes them, but the leather straps in the gray, silver, and br- the black. Mm-hmm. 
And the, if you wanted the metal, you can either hold off until they release the metal and buy the whole unit for two ninety nine, mm-hmm. or when they release the metal, you can buy the band for eighty mm-hmm. after already purchasing it. So yes, you're paying thirty dollars more so you can play with this early, or you can just be okay with the leather because it's leather. And I know metal looks pretty, but if you have arm hair, yes. Well, and the other thing is the. Well, I don't think the leather strap looks particularly good. It's really plain. I know the phone's really plain too. But whether I got the metal or the leather, I'd probably be replacing it. It does use a standard wash band connector. They did say and that ninety nine percent of the wash bands out there look nicer than this. Yes, <laughs> and but they did they, they did say that these bands are catered specifically to this device where others aren't so. But that just be. means they want you to buy it for I them, know, so they I know it's a margin. tactic, but hey, yeah. they could be right. They could. <laughs> But I have a feeling, just like with the LG G Watch, if you put a good band on it, it's going to look much nicer. Yeah. Yeah. I actually saw some people that managed to make the LG G Watch look like, you know, something you'd want on your wrist by putting a good band on it. Which is saying a lot, because that was... That was the really chunky one, wasn't it? That was the fucking ugliest piece of technology I've seen this year. Uh, Well, yeah. Uh, Speaking of clunky, ugly things... Um, not only does LG have a clunky, ugly square watch, they have the Guatcher. Which sounds disgusting. Yes. It's like the noise you make yeah. when you step in poop. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, it's the LG G Watch R, but that's even more awkward to say than Guatcher. Yeah. That's truth. And the price of the Guatcher is too damn high. It's too damn high. Too damn high. Or at least it sounds like it would be if they go with exchange rates, because it sounds like it's going to retail for 299 euros. Which is uh, close to $400 US. Yeah! That's a fucking lot of money for an ugly watch. That's yeah, it's a lot of money for... That's almost what you paid, right? Yeah. Or close to. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of money, especially for something that looks like something I wore when I... The cheap watch I wore when I was in junior yeah. high. I've seen a lot of people that are like, Oh my god, it's so pretty! What? Yeah, they're all over the Google Plus machine. You're insane. But I think the thing that they're not catching on with is those little tick marks around the face of the watch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are going to look really fucking dumb if you don't have that exact watch face on there. If you have a different watch face, if you have an analog watch face or you're looking at a notification, you just have these fucking hash marks trying to cover up a gigantic bezel. Mm -hmm. Because it has a gigantic bezel. Mm. That's the only way they were able to make it fully round. It and wasn't that's the reason why Moto X has the little chin, is because it's either that or the bezel. Yep. Yeah. And this doesn't even have the fucking light sensor. <sighs> and it it's huge. It looks like a fucking Casio like G Shock. But it's not. It it doesn't even have all the you know durability that makes it G Shock worth buying. Yeah. yeah, like like part of the problem is that they need to sell people on why they need to start wearing watches again. Yeah. If they're gonna spend five hundred dollars on a watch. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Because so many people their cell phone has replaced it. And yes, yeah. the smart watches are sort of your watch replacing your cell phone in a way. But you know, that's uh and right. still, people aren't used to it. Speaking of which, I didn't add it in the show notes, but did you see the new Samsung curved Tizen oh, based the Tizen based watch? Yeah. Yeah. That looks like you just took an old iPhone and just kind of melted it and wrapped it <laughs> on your wrist. <laughs> it's got a two inch screen. And I saw a uh, picture of it on a woman's wrist. And it seriously looked like she was wearing a fucking tablet as a gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be pretty epic. It really would. Mm-hmm. But do, do the whole one woman thing, one on each wrist. <laughs> 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 Too bad it's not an Android Wear. Okay, Google. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that has a SIM slot on it. That has actual cell reception. Yeah, it has three G mm-hmm. now. Of course it. It's got a SIM card. Is, is it going to be treated as a phone or a tablet? Because either way, you're going to be dealing with a data plan for it. Yeah, right. Samsung, Samsung said that it can... It can Basically, it, it's a device in which you can leave your phone at home and not mm-hmm. be stranded. You can type your messages on the screen. I don't think it, it'll be treated more like a tablet plan. Than yeah, a I, I'm just wondering, does it use, like, 
some kind of IP messenger, because obviously it couldn't use Hangouts. It's, it's teasing. Well, if it's got 3G, it can be on cellular and not make calls. My tablet mm -hmm. is on LTE, and I yeah. can send actual text messages. Yeah. And your friends are all going to wonder why it's coming from a different phone number. Oh, I've explained that first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Most first thing this one isn't coming from my tablet. This is coming from my phone. I used to have to do that <laughs> when I wanted to send a text from my computer because Google Voice was the only option. And everybody asked me why they would sometimes receive texts from me from a 323 area code. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, it's just not a good solution. No. No, no it's not. Does anyone here want to take the hint? Uh, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll cover this quickly, uh, just because. <sighs> all I can think about whenever I see this thing is the Secret Service like spy guy. The president is down! The president <laughs> is down! I don't Fred. know why I went to Arnold. Um, <laughs> is it like those Bud Light commercials where he's down for anything? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I don't know how long he's been trying to think that up. Oh, Lord. All right, so... Something it, about the Arnold Schwarzenegger voice made me go there. But it's a, it's a Bluetooth headset. It's a $149.99, very, 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 very low-profile blue headset. Bluetooth headset. I don't plan on purchasing it. My big question is, are the features that it provides exclusive to that, or does it? can it work on the big, clunky Bluetooth headsets, too? I think it's exclusive to that. That sucks. Um, yeah, the... It, automatically turns off when it's removed from the ear. Mm -hmm. and well, the I just mean the always listening, the awesome. notifications in the ear. Yeah. yeah. It'd be epic if that was like some surprise thing coming in L, or even M, or N. Yeah. And then Motorola's just teasing it with this ridiculously expensive tiny earbud. Yeah. Um, that, combined with the 360, is damn close to what you get out of Google Glass, though. It's true. And at that point, look at the price differential. That's a big. That's that suddenly is cheap now. It's true. You know, I but could you can buy glass now too. Yeah. I mean, um, I could actually see like myself $100. getting this if the reviews are good. Yes. If I had any use for a Bluetooth headset, which I don't, but yes. though though if they could convert it into just a plain hearing aid, with how low profile it is, it'd be. Uh, yeah, they nice. actually the hearing aids they have now are actually getting smaller like that. That's yeah. probably where they got the idea for it. Honestly, um, my mom's hearing aid is a Bluetooth headset. Yeah, um, <laughs> and they've got yeah they've got so much new stuff. They have ones that are actually under the skin now that yeah. you don't see at all. There's there's all kinds of crap. Unfortunately, the, with the hearing aid thing, everybody's hearing loss is different and they all have to yeah. have different kinds of hearing aids so not all the fancy ones work for all the people who need them really. so Kobo did something that John actually cares about yeah I think multiple people in this room actually care about it I, which I care know. about it but they have done something before that that I care about and it's in a drawer <laughs> yeah. see that's how much you care about this is the first time that I've seen something from Kobo that I actually wanted to buy and that I likely will it's an e-reader with a Super nice, mm -hmm. high-resolution screen. It's not backlit, which is close to a deal-breaker for me. It has light, though. Does it have light? It does yeah. have light. Oh, it it's does just not light. backlit, so it's actually easier on your eyes. Oh, it, it is lit? I didn't realize yes. this one was lit. Okay, then I'm totally fucking buying it. What it's I... got a screen that's as nice as the new Kindle, mm -hmm. and it's fucking waterproof. It's also almost $50 more expensive than a Kindle Fire. Yeah, it's expensive. It's, <laughs> it's pricey. For now. Right. It's so pricey. I don't think I'll be running out and buying it right away, especially since I've been on a Kindle since I got an e-reader, and that's been my e-reader of choice. But Amazon's getting sketchy with their books and stuff, yeah. so that's getting awkward. My Kindle's starting to wear down, and having one that I could drop in the bathtub and would not electrocute me or die would be amazing. Having a a way to read books in the bath is super awesome. I love that she thinks she's going to die from a, in a Kindle battery. <laughs> Does anybody else notice that? Well, Water conducts electricity! <laughs> maybe she's charging it at the at same, same time. time. Yeah. Well, you, okay, so I'm pretty sure the waterproof one won't work if you're charging it at That's the same true. time. That's true. Do you see electrons? <laughs> and it's like, you can't get electrocuted by DC. Uh, I know James was actually the one who first brought yeah. that to my attention. Yeah, like I, I watched a kind of 
a review video of it on YouTube, and like you can actually stick it in a bucket of water and flip the pages. That's super cool. Okay, I'm like that, what? It, that that it has something over the any waterproof cell phone because mm -hmm. as soon as you put my phone in water or it splashes on there, that screen goes fucking nuts yeah. until you dry it off. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a. Uh, I could sit def I can definitely see myself buying this, but to be clear, the X and the 360 both come first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's something I think I'll look into, but I don't think until the price drops is that something that I'm gonna be too, mm -hmm. too jumping on. Because I was like, well, maybe it's like the Kindle Fire, where it can be a tablet, and I didn't see anything that yeah. said that. Yeah. It's, it's very black and white screen. It's you know, which is what I honestly I prefer for my Kindle. Like it's for yeah. reading books. It's not you know I don't I don't want a Kindle Fire, but if I'm going to be spending that much money more than yeah. what I would for a Kindle Fire. I Part of what like makes it worthwhile for me is I have I don't have an e-reader anymore. My mm -hmm. Nook died oh. a, a while ago and I've just been using my Nexus 7. Mm -hmm. And I really miss having a screen that doesn't it's glow and hurt my eyes when I'm reading Well, and having period. to change the page every 10 seconds on the phone because... Yeah. Like, well, I mean, the Nexus know. 7 is well, well, the yeah, same size. I can get a really nice low font size. Yeah. So that's about the same as a book. But, you know, the battery dies a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. It's not as bright. It's it's too fucking bright. If you turn the brightness down enough that you can read it at night, it suddenly is super low... Uh, resolution. Um, no, not, not low resolution, but low contrast. Yeah. You know, because it actually turns the whites gray. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I saw in there is that um, they're... They're advertising a battery life of up to two months. And this is based on 30 minutes of use per day. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sorry, but most people who are going to be buying an e-reader are reading more than 30 minutes <laughs> a day. If you're going to be spending 250 bucks on an e-reader, I hope you're reading more than 30 to minutes be, a day. To be fair, Amazon does the same thing when they advertise the Kindles. Right, yeah. and I know that it's, and everyone does the same thing, and I get that, but, you know... It's just one of those things where yeah, it's like... Yeah, I would expect a good solid week seriously. out of it. Yeah. And that's... Yeah. Well, and my Kindle battery has... Because I turn the Wi-Fi off on mine, mm because -hmm. if I have the Wi-Fi on, it'll last a day, but... Yeah. Um, I have one of the older Kindles, too. Um, but yeah, my Kindle battery with heavy use will last me a couple of weeks to a month, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of depending on how heavy of use, but it's almost always more than 30 minutes a day. I don't remember the yeah. last time I read less than 30 minutes a day. I don't think that that's possible for you. I'm yeah. sure it's happened. I was probably violently ill. I, I had it <laughs> last weekend. Saturday, I read Harry Potter 3, and Sunday, I read Harry Potter 4. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> If anybody can kill down an e-reader's battery. Especially since this is not a multiple time through kind of thing where he can that go was that my fast. first read. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was my first read. Yeah. So that's even worse. Um, when cool. the last Wheel of Time book came out, the like 1,200 pages that it was, <laughs> that was a one day read. Yeah. It, admittedly, I didn't get any sleep for work the next day, <laughs> but it was a one day thing. Yeah. I love when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> I don't love it the next day. I did, uh, the new Sandman Slam book came out. It took me two days to read, but I had a... Yeah, you powered through that. It was a uh, work shift in between. Yep. Those are the worst, aren't they? New book you're really looking forward to, and it's like, fuck, I have to work. Yeah. Uh, I probably vacation, vacation left, or... Oh, no. Uh, oh, I had my, my previous job before Safeway. So say I'll say the name of Safeway, because I'm not talking about doing bad things at this one. Um, <laughs> but the job before that... Uh, when the new uh, Cold Days, when the when Cold Days came out, uh, the Harry, Harry Harry Dresden book from Jim Butcher came out. I had my Kindle at work with me, and I didn't do a single thing in my job that day. <laughs> <laughs> I would I'd go to the bathroom to like I was cleaning the bathrooms. I'd shut the stall, lock the door, sat on the toilet, and read. Yep. <laughs> and then when it was about time that I should have been done cleaning, I unlocked. I went back out and I hide the Kindle and I go back to the back room and I lean up against the wall and read. Yep. And, and everywhere I should have been doing my job, I was reading. If somebody came by, because I'd always tuck the Kindle wherever it couldn't be seen other than where I am. Somebody come by, like I would stand next to my closet. Somebody come by and, and my, it's in the closet, so I'll just gra grab a tool and act like I'm gonna walk away until they can't see me anymore. <laughs> I finished that one. I finished that one in a day. That's nice. Gotta love cargo pants. 
Yeah. It was uh, a good day. Uh, so, Hu Wei Wei actually did something too. Huawei. Huawei, Huawei. The Huawei Ascend Mate 7 actually looks really cool. It's got a stupid idiot name. <laughs> How big do you think the screen is? Ascend Mate 7? Yes. It is, I'd say, 4.7. No, it's a, it's a 6 inch. Oh. <laughs> So average for mate. Ah! <laughs> Sad. <laughs> but no, it, it looks like a fucking really awesome device. It's it, almost exactly the same size as the note, the new note. Um, same thickness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's got smaller bezels. I think it looks much nicer. Personally, so it's got the good girth. <laughs> um, it's got a small it's got a forty-one hundred milliamp. It's a penis. If you didn't get that, yet. <laughs> uh, it's got a forty-one hundred milliamp hour battery. Impressive. Um, that's what that's I'm talking huge. about. Huge. That'll last you all day. <laughs> <laughs> Any final thoughts before we go to break? Yeah. Um, David Ruddock from Android Police says yeah. it's the best thing that's cut that came out this week, and. That's that's really high praise considering that the new Moto X and that and the uh, Note came out this week. That's huge. That that's is huge. crazy. Yeah, James. Yes. All I can say about that is all day long at work, I get people who look at the Samsung Galaxy Mega, which has a six point three inch screen, and like, how can you use it as a phone? It's so huge. Yes. So well, now, to be fair, the, the the Mega is got like gigantic bezels. Yes, but yeah. still. 6.3 versus a 6 inch? That might be a difference. Yeah. Um, oh, it's also got dual SIM because it's you know it's probably a phone that's never going to be released in America, Ooh. unfortunately. But one of the SIM slots is actually a micro SD slot too. Hmm. So you can choose extra storage or multiple oh, networks. Multiple networks. That's very interesting. <gasps> we'll be right back. Or actually, now that I look at it, it might mean that it's uh, that it does both at the same time. I might have just read that wrong. Yeah, well. Oh well. Bonus for the video, people. So here at the Dracarium Podcast, we are dedicated to bringing you good, high-quality content. But we can bring you better content if we have better equipment. For instance, if we were able to replace Andrew here with Chris Hardwick, we would just have a better podcast. Alternatively, since I don't think we can quite afford to get ourselves a Chris Hardwick, we can get ourselves microphones and a mixer so that you can actually hear all of us, even when we have a volume disparity like Andrew and TJ. And so we've started an Indiegogo. To help us out, go to the link in the doobly-doo or bit.ly slash dracgogo. And we returned! John is doing his usual thing where he shows th things off on his phone. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, it's much grinder. nicer now that his screen is not correct. Yeah, it really is. Yep. <laughs> so just kind of scroll it to the side so you can see past the crack. So, scary face dragons. Okay. <laughs> that is my username on Emojily. If it ever releases on Android, which it probably won't. I don't remember what mine is. <laughs> it has something to do with poop and dragons. Yeah, mine is oh, oh, dragons. Uh, Emojily came out. Uh, it's the uh, social network where you can only say emoji. Oh, it's out? Yeah, it's out. What? Only on my phone. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, it is out. You can download it and install it if you have an iPhone. Which, if you are, you've been really bored by this podcast. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized we've only talked about Android. It's true. Oh, well, your iWatch isn't out yet. We'll yeah, talk about the iWatch when it's out. We probably yeah. won't touch yeah, it. It's not like they're, it's not like they're announcing anything we'll, anytime soon. We'll mock about the uh, yeah. iWatch. We'll, we'll mock about them soon. Yes. We will. Don't get it. me wrong. They make good products. They are just not as good as their price points. Although we will all covet sapphire screens. Yes. Yeah. Um, but no, it's out. The link I will add to the doobly doo. But uh, Tom Scott and Matt Gray, the people that made it, also the people that make my Tech favorite Tech podcast, difficulties. my absolute favorite podcast, which they technical have difficulties. Yeah, they need to do. They're going to be doing another season, apparently. Um, 
they wrote they came up with this as a joke and then decided they'd actually write it. And they did it on a lark, and apparently it was much harder than they expected it to be. <laughs> and there's a talk that they gave at one of the hacker conferences about it, and all of the ugly, hideous hacks that they had to use to get it get it through. And uh, it's it's worth watching. It's fun. I wish it was on Android, but it doesn't sound like it ever will be. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's like they're not going to charge for it. There's no way to monetize it. And it already took too much time. Mm. <laughs> and they both have full-time jobs. Boo. Yes. So. Hello. hello person? <laughs> hello Kitty's not a cat. Um, yes it is. Apparently hello. not, according to Sanrio. It's like a schoolgirl. That... That's named Kitty and looks like a cat. And is a lion. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't understand why they would say this. It seems disturbing. <laughs> but it also makes more sense when you consider the fact that she, like, has a pet cat. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured it was, like, a lower evolved version of herself. And eventually later on there's going to be a fight and that one's going to yes. evolve into a Hello Kitty. Yes. Kind of kind of like a goofy walking Pluto on a leash. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah. I, I don't know why they felt the need to make that distinction. Yeah. Hello Kitty has been out as long as I've been alive, as far as I'm aware. I remember looking at Hello Kitty stuff when I was Faraday's age, so... Yeah, I don't I don't know what that was about. It, it's, it's really weird. It's really weird. The internet lost its shit over it, though. Yes. Oh, yeah. It really did. It'd be almost like, you know, if they came out and said that My Little Ponies weren't ponies. Well, those clearly aren't. Well, that's special. Oh, here comes the internet, man. Those bronies are going to kick your ass. They have to find me first. <laughs> Unless it's already one here. <laughs> so is the future really powered by germs? Possibly. Okay, I fucking love this story. It's a good story. It's, a, it's happened. Yeah. Anybody catch that? It's yeah. I, I, I fucking love this story. <laughs> this, uh... The scientists have created propane through genetically engineered E. coli. See, my, that's an accident waiting to happen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> my issue with this is like, do they really think that people are going to willingly power their barbecues with E. coli produced propane? I don't because think people would even know that it happened. Honestly. Probably not, but... <laughs> I mean, Surprise, public! They think they're going to need a lot of funding mm -hmm. for this to continue forward. Because it's super expensive. <laughs> but this could also end up being something like 100 years down the line. This could be, you know. This could as, save the world. Yeah. Yeah. Who's gonna save the world tonight? Batman. E. coli. E. coli. Yes. <laughs> just, yeah, I just went with Batman. Yeah. Well, just do it on an industrial scale, and instead of powering everything by natural gas, all of a sudden you have giant columns of propane powered. Turbines. Yeah. Yeah. And then some other genetically engineered E. coli that take the hydrocarbons out of the air. Yeah. Yeah. I th I find that one actually a really exciting story that could oh, yeah. be really cool it's, for the future. It's opening up all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. I mean, just... Yeah, I would imagine the and risks then you, then you get like E. coli. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you get like a, a vegan barbecue and they're like, non-GMO propane. <laughs> 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 Isn't that an oxymoron? <laughs> a, a vegan barbecue? You can barbecue vegetables. Barbecued vegetables are the shit. Super, yes, when they're put next to meat. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> super intense vegans, I think, think that cooking the vegetables hurts them or something. <laughs> I have them, known vegans so. that wouldn't eat off of a grill that had tad meat on it. I was going to say, like, has that grill ever touched I the, actually, flesh of, uh, the flesh of an animal? <laughs> former, former Ingress player friend, mm -hmm. whose wife was a vegan, and we were talking about having a barbecue, and she wouldn't eat because we were going to be cooking meat on mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I don't know. We understand. even had two barbecues. We were gonna clean one up totally and just use it for. Vegetables. That's a uh, that that's dedication to that I just will never achieve. <laughs> you know, dedication to anything. Yeah. 
Well, not not eating meat is pretty much more dedication than I will I, ever have. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I, I have yet to meet a, a, a non self righteous vegan. Yeah. The internet is getting in your brain. brain. Okay, of course. Duh. <laughs> right. uh, I'm just going to read this straight from the article. Uh, researchers at Barcelona Star Lab claim in a paper to have achieved direct brain to brain communication in humans over the internet using an EEG. Plagiarism. <laughs> I changed a board. <laughs> well, he gave credit. It's not plagiarism. I, I, I did say it. I was reading straight <laughs> out of the article. Boing Plagiarism boing dot net. By <laughs> but, uh, yeah, over the internet. So you can literally just, like, have EEGs hooked up to your brain and somebody else's brain and just, like, communicate. Super slowly, though. Super slowly. And I think it's more like thinking of, uh, I am thinking of red. I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting an image here. Is it the... Is it red? <laughs> it's, it's red. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, the, Yay! the article, and again, I'm directly quoting, says it's the equivalent of telepathic Morse code. <laughs> but the message was delivered, and that's the important thing. Yeah. So, that. So, if I asked you what the greatest idea ever would be, what would you say? I would say send all of your reality TV stars to Mars. So this this idea is really close to the best idea ever, except for one critical flaw, in that they would send TV back to us. I want to <laughs> just send them to Mars. <laughs> just no, I, I totally want to see how the Kardashians do on Mars. I would watch. <laughs> hey, they, they control a whole sector of space. <laughs> oh. Their weapons don't do anything to our shields. <laughs> <laughs> so, can, can you elaborate? Are they actually sending people to Mars? Because that okay, that's uh, what they're trying to do. It was a confusing article, I what? have to say. So, so, what they're what they're trying to do is they like they're having like a a company is is like trying to. They try and launch a pro project where they have people audition to be part of a small team that's going to be going to Mars, but but the revolution will be televised. So, and then they're releasing like all the audition videos to the internet. People will be pick, will be will be like choosing and voting on which basically which choosing who gets to die on Mars. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> because to be clear, this is a one-way trip. Right. So oh, it always. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're not going to be like trying to build a rocket when they're there, or if they were, are, it's going to be really tragic because they will not succeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it might actually get people to be excited about space yeah. again, which would be good. Yeah. And uh, you know, especially if it results in a bunch of reality TV stars stranded a million miles away. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when was the last time people actually watched a a like rocket launch? Well. <laughs> I I do so. I live stream them on the internet, but I'm a bad example. I don't even have a TV. Yeah, I have one. The house has three. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It used to be back back in the golden age of the space race, like people would go, people would like huddle around watching. Yay! It's the new Apollo. Mm-hmm. Well, that was before Star Trek and yeah. everything and. and you know, everything we do is less cool than what was on the TVs, so. <laughs> I'm proud of this one. They be flying in your windows and dropping your package off. <laughs> so, Google has a drone <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you rang. <laughs> so, Google has a package delivery drone set up as well, apparently. Yeah. And it's been theirs, testing it for two years. Yeah. Theirs is from Google X, which is the same group that does the self-driving cars, mm -hmm. and Google Glass, and, and oh, uh, Internet via Balloon, Project Loon. Project Loon. Which is literally, like, basically sending cell towers up with weather balloons and, mm -hmm. and using them to beam Internet into Africa. Hmm. 
Which sounds way cooler than anything else. <laughs> well, better than Coke bottles. But yeah, it's a. Uh, it looks much cooler than the Amazon drone, I gotta say. Because they actually are showing it hovering and then dropping a package on the string, just go, bing, mm-hmm. flying off. All completely mm-hmm. autonomously, of course. That would be cool. And it's, you know, the the, the Navy jets that have the. so they can hover? Mm-hmm. <coughs> it's like that. You know what would be really good? Huh? Is if these drones could say, there's a house, there's a front door, but there's a fenced backyard. Mm-hmm. I'm going to securely put their package in the fenced backyard. <laughs> yeah. Because our fucking mail delivery people can't figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, uh, I want it to be just a little smarter than that and just like try and drop Christmas packages down the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> And just pray that you don't have a fire burn yeah. this time. Well, you know, it would probably be able to sense the smoke. <laughs> yeah, if it could get it down the chimney, it could probably tell if there was a fire. <laughs> just like gets up there, you can tell it's Christmas because the drone comes up to the chimney and is like, huh? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I think that would be better because my worry is that it's going to be like, throw it near the generally general area of the front door and I'm sorry, people steal shit. Well, and depending on how general area it is, you know, we live on a fairly busy road. Yeah. If they miss, <laughs> it's just like in the road. And my Moto smashed. 360 just got run over by a semi truck. <laughs> Thank you, drone. <laughs> my Moto 360 just got dropped on top of a semi truck. It's <laughs> in Austin now. Yeah, like then again, like you go to like some developments, and they're like from doorstep to doorstep, just like. Four feet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, so this is for 2291, and then it gets dropped off on 2295. Or 2291B. Two, two, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want it to come up and go, <laughs> and knock on your door. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the drone is just like, <laughs> <laughs> would be even better is if it had like a little poker and it could ring your doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see now, see now I'm picturing like the little like mini Death Star from like star, from like Star Wars one that came in to uh, give Princess Leia the little like injection. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With like a rock'em sock'em robot arms <laughs> on the front to knock. <laughs> oh, we no, just made the best thing ever. That's what well, just and it's, and it's Google too, so it'd be Google's voice. You know, <laughs> your package has arrived. Yeah. <laughs> didn't they? Didn't they buy the rights to? Stephen Fry's voice. I hope so. I hope so. I, I think I heard that uh, quite a while ago on a, on one of my podcasts. That'd be awesome. <laughs> you get yourself some weaponized tail. Yeah, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> it's huge. It's a very large dinosaur. Um, I'm. There we go. The Sydney Morning Herald reports, which is awesome because their a URL is literally smh.com, <laughs> which doesn't stand for Sydney Morning Herald. It stands for Shake My Head. <laughs> uh, it apparently weighed 59 tons. I'm not sure which ton that is. Yes. And Whichever metric, one they use in Australia. And how many stones? Metric. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it, it, it was 26 meters long. See, if you say meters... You know what they use. Yes. <laughs> Especially well, since three tons kinds is of tons. spelled differently than our ton. But uh, yeah, it's called the Dreadnought Shrani. Shrani. It's the best name <laughs> for a dinosaur ever, by yeah. the way. So- sounds like an Australian snake. Yeah. Uh, it's apparent the, the vertebra were done in such a way that they could tell that it was extremely well muscled on its tail. <laughs> and that it would just like basically beat the shit out of you with its tail. <laughs> they don't say that in that. Sounds like some someone words. I've met. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's been the same the ultimate in twerk. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Speaking of other old things, there was a Washington man who was freed after decades wrongly locked up. Yes, yes. Uh, some people have known him as the Kennewick Man. He died about nine thousand years ago. Mm. Uh near Kennewick. It's a city in Washington. Yeah. And there's been uh, close to a decade 
that this guy has been, this guy's bones been being fought over. You know, the Army Corps of Engineers said it was their thing. Uh, and you the sheriff <laughs> said it was his thing because it was human remains that they found in his jurisdiction. Oh my goodness. Uh, a bunch of uh, Native American tribes said it was theirs because it was human remains in an area that they had been. And it's finally basically been decided, no, none of you guys have a valid claim to it. It's science's bitch. <laughs> um, yeah, it's science! It was 9,000 years ago. This was not a member of any tribe. Yeah. Mm. yeah. This was before it was 9,000 years ago. It has nothing to do with jurisdiction. Yeah. <laughs> and there has been a paper released with 48 authors and 17 uh, additional researchers. And, and it pages? is 680 pages long. It's a big page. It's the most complete analysis of a Paleo-American skeleton ever done. Hmm. Uh, it looks really cool. Uh, I, and I kind of want it. You, the skeleton? Or the paper? <laughs> Both. <laughs> it, it's not a paper. That's a book. Yeah, that's yeah. a book. That's not a paper anymore. They still call it a paper, though. The yeah, weirdest thing is is like the closest to ethnicity they were, they were able to find for him. I didn't like, get to that part. Uh, so he like he's got more in common with with a na- with like a native like the native Japanese hmm. like the Inu than than a Native American. Hmm. That's that is actually really interesting and well and that's one of makes the me want to read it even more. Yeah. One of the more interesting parts about the, his whole thing was that he was not Native American. Yeah, the, yeah, they say more Polynesian. Yeah. And it, it wasn't coastal. Or at least we don't think it was coastal 9,000 years ago. Oh, nobody was here. <laughs> nobody knows. Um, we don't have any actual eyewitness accounts. Uh, but yeah, they say looks Polynesian. Yeah. With a low starch diet. Yeah. Yeah, he, had, he didn't have any cavities, but his teeth were worn down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the sad part is that scientists don't get to keep him. Because mm-hmm. they cause like, they were, like the judge ruled in favor of the scientist, but then they said, okay, you have a week. Have fun. <laughs> fun. Then he goes back to the Army Corps of Engineers. Oh, jeez. Are they going to do, like, stress tests on his bones? So, know. apparently Shazam is not going to be in the Justice League movie. Correct. Mm. So they, so, so big, big news is the the Rock is going to be playing Black Adam in a brand new movie. So he's not going to be Shazam. No, he's yeah. going going to be Black Adam, which racism racism aside. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he's he is part he is part black. But and he's Black a Island? lot island. Yeah. Or the rock. Well no, the rock. He's like D Wayne. Anyway. <laughs> so it so it's been it's been announced officially the movie's happening and he's and he is cast, but it's not being put out by Warner Brothers, so to speak. It's being done by New Line just to Kind of like spread spread things out. DC really does not know how to do movies. DC, they don't. this the entire DC cinematic universe. It's just, it's just a train wreck right now. It, it yeah. is. Yeah, but the good news is, like they, like even though it's not going to be on New Line, like even though it's not going to be on regular Warner Brothers, and they're saying it will have nothing to do with the, the current DC universe. At least, at least it's going to be. More lighthearted. That very is, low bar. Yeah. <laughs> well, very very <laughs> low bar. But considering considering Billy Batson slash Captain Marvel slash Shazam is a twelve slash thirteen year old boy who sa- who says a magic word and then turns into a turns into a Superman wannabe kind of thing with a in like a marching band mm-hmm. kind of outfit. <laughs> like if they try to make that. Dark and gritty like Man of Steel. <laughs> Dude, they took a guy that dresses up as a bat and made it dark and gritty. Eh, Batman's always been kind of dark yeah, and gritty. Kind of I think saying always, always really been is super lighthearted. Yeah, I, could, I think saying always is going really far when you consider that Adam West happened. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot. Holy catfish, Batman! Yeah. 
That was a oh, Jesus. That was a weird thing from the sixties. Oh, anyway. <laughs> I actually saw an episode one time, when it was when I was living in California, it was randomly on the TV, and they were like, talking about, they were like, in some bar or something, and and Robin was like, why didn't you just deal with all of those alcoholics and drunkards and blah blah blah, and Batman was like, well, they're people too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's so, the weirdest thing ever. We're, we're running yes. long, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna, Sorry. you know, we're trying not to, trying not to. To focus too much. Yeah. Uh, don't focus. Um, I'm good at that. What's the, okay, James? Explain the next sure. part. Sure. So Harper Collins is is off is offering their own app, and then the the testing the testing the waters with it by saying that like if you if you have previously purchased the book um, Heart Shape Box by Joe Hill, if you if you take a picture using this app and then write your write your name on the copyright page. And then, and then you upload this picture. They will send you a free digital code for the for the for the ebook. I feel like that's a really, really convoluted way of going about it. Well, they're trying yeah. to get people to hand, <clears throat> like, hand the book one off. Of, one of my favorite, uh, I'm pretty sure, uh, yeah, Brandon Sanderson books mm -hmm. uh, through Subterranean Press, which is a, a small outfit. Yeah, but you know, we're talking a major author here. Uh, you buy the book, you get a code for the ebook when you buy it. They email it to you. You buy the book, you get the ebook code. Well, sure, but yeah. you know, he's you know he's talking. They're testing the waters and they're using an old book that they yeah. can be planned for that. Yes, and yeah. it's and it's a like with a with a smaller publisher, you can you can do things like that easier. Like it's like, not hard to send an email. Sure, <laughs> 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 but this is like you would be surprised, apparently. <laughs> It's, it's true. It's not. It's not hard to send email, but but with a gigantic corporation like Harper Collins, it has all these different imprints. Uh, it's. I feel it's like it would be less work to just work something out with Amazon, Google, and Apple, and well, I guess you can still say and Barnes and Noble. Well, yeah, I'm not sure how yeah. long that's going to last. Uh, um, you could, I feel like it would be much easier to work something out with them, where they would you buy it and they email you a code, yeah. than it would be to work out. You take a picture of it, and it recognizes that it's your signature. It matches it with other people's signatures so that it knows that it isn't anybody else. You know, you're not just taking well, a it, picture of somebody else's. Well, it, it's that seems like a lot. Of well, extra work. I don't think they're match. actually checking. To be yeah. honest, I bet yeah. that they're doing that to because people who are good people will not do the mm -hmm. bad things because of that extra step. Well, the thing that makes me wonder is, at that point, why are they even doing that? It's because of what I just said. Yeah, but I mean, why are they doing like, the, you have to take the this, this signature and all that? Because it's because it gives accountability to yeah. the people that are getting the free thing. And it's not, it's not that they're necessarily going to check it, but they can. They have the option, mm -hmm. you know, but it's... Well, what I'm know, saying is... Dishonest people aren't going to bother. No, but they're, they're just going they're, to pirate it. I'm pretty sure that they are a smaller group. And honest than... people, honest people, are already not going to be pirating it. There's those people in the middle though who How big like is that wouldn't. Group? I would say most people. Yeah. Because I'm not totally honest all the time, but I'm not gonna be you know super shady either. I'd say all of us fall in the middle One more minute. than anything mm -hmm. else. I think that this is this has gone on a tangent, <laughs> and we should talk about the next thing because I'm actually excited about it. There are going to be new Terminator sequels. Part two I've and three. I've never seen any of them. Yeah, part two and three. I've seen none of them. Well, no, because they they're doing the reboot. I've literally never seen any Terminator movies. Wow. Uh, that's <laughs> how in the world? Uh, okay, John, I just started reading Harry Potter John, John, <laughs> last week. John really didn't, you know, have life until he met us, so he's trying to catch up on everything before that. All he got was, you know, seriously YouTube. though, yeah, it's like I've I've had up until like two or three You're years a ago. Hipster. Oh God. How did we not know this? Up until like last year, I had watched Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and The Matrix. So the big and those ones. were literally the only DVDs I owned. They're still the only DVDs I own because I don't buy physical shit anymore. <laughs> um, but that was like it. 
I've read all of the books relating to them. Um, I've read Silmarillion and all the other Tolkien stuff. I've read all 300 some odd Star Wars books. But that was like it. A bunch of other books. Anyway, but not I'm not a TV person. <laughs> Terminators! <laughs> They're rebooting only the, the, the second and third one? Third one wasn't even that good. So, no, what 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 they're what they're doing is it like kind of what they did with Superman Returns, where, oh. where like after well, like after like they're like what the I think it's Terminated Genesis spelled spelled with a Y is coming out I believe next year, and then it's Arnold's going me back somehow even though it's been he's aged like thirty years and then. It's supposed to be kind of a prequel-ish to the first one. It's like the first one, one and a half. And then from there, they're going to split off into another alternate timeline kind of style. And then they're, going to, and then they're planning sequels on the new reboots. Be, essentially because of how well Terminator Salvation and its planned sequel went. Hmm. Oh wait, they didn't do very well at all. <laughs> Interesting. Like the the most the biggest thing that that came out of Terminator Salva Salvation was uh, was the um, TV uh, show. Well, no, no, one of that happened before that. No, uh, Batman dude. Uh, Christian Bale. Christian Bale rant. Yeah, yeah, that was a pretty good one. Yeah, he got got pissed <laughs> off on the on the set. I of think the, I'm going the Batman dude. Yeah, got stop on set, starts yelling in his best English accent. <laughs> That's such a great one. All right, ladies and gents, we have run over a little today, if you haven't noticed. Yeah. Uh, quite a bit of good content, quite a bit of good tech. Check out some of the stuff we have announced. Check out the Moto 360. It might be back in stock in a couple months. And <clears throat> all the same, we thank you for listening or watching or whichever way you do it, have a great whatever time of day. Okay. Fans fanning. Hey, <laughs> somebody else got to do it that time. Hey there, geeks. You may not know this, but we offer services. A lot of them. Do you like a computer like that? Or maybe flashier? Or maybe not as flashy. Computers aren't your thing. We also do mobile installations if you're in town. Things like car alarms, car stereos, keyless entry, remote starts. No matter what kind of geek you are. Sports geek. Cartoon geek. Video game geeks. We have them all! You can find all of that and the ways to contact us at dracarium.com.